Hello and welcome back to another quick tutorial about Rust and Godot. Today we will try to implement some basic inputs from the keyboard. So therefore let's first heading to our um, IDE or in that case to our text editor and we will need to create a new package in our script folder. So if you did not see the previous um, tutorial, just refer to it, have a check on it then you actually know about the basic um, project structure, what we try to achieve. So we use again cargo new, and this time we call it controlled as with the argument lib. Once the folder got successfully created, we need to update our root cargo file and add the new module under members. And next, we will just have a quick inspection of our new created package. So we have here the source and also the cargo file and we need to add again our dependencies for our Godot native script module. And next we will also try to compile it. In the meantime, we also will start editing the source already. So what we're gonna do now, first we clear all the default template um, code from it under source. And then we move next to our uncontrolled component, what we create in the previous session, and copy and paste then our um, code from last time, which is kind of a template for us currently. Then we are heading back to our controlled module under source librs. We paste now that particular code. Of course, we need now to modify it a bit as our previous module was referring to uncontrolled. We will now search and replace the uncontrolled with the controlled um, word and remove all the unused imports. Let's also change the mutable owner to the constant owner, so it's immutable. And next we just will add the pr in the process method body, the input handling. So therefore we are changing to the go dot documentation for Rust. So we are looking for input actually, and input is actually available using the singleton pattern. So there should be a method in place to get the reference to the singleton instance. We also define which kind of library feature we want to use, so that's why we use um, the keyword use, go.native and input. Now we can use uh, all the functionalities which we just imported, so that means let's have a check, go.singleton is the way how we can access it. And we also want to find out the method we need to call to know when a key is pressed. In the meanwhile, let's store the singleton in a new local variable. Let's call it input ref. Next, we put the if condition in place for the input ref dot So now we are looking for the pressed key is key pressed. Here we go. Where is it? Let's just search it on the documentation. Ah, great, here it is. So let's copy and paste this method. And in addition, this is now expecting an integer 64 type. So therefore we need to find out about the, the current key mapping. So there should be a global 
module available or let's directly search for key underscore a for example so we can see this is now in this global constants or Godard constants and this one we also gonna import in our newly created script to refer directly to it to structure things a bit better maybe let's improve it already on that stage so first we will add some new properties or instance variables to our struct we call it up down left and right which are all of them are boolean and later on we will use the input method in particular of our implementation of the controlled um, component in order to update the particular boolean values and depending on the boolean values we will have in the process the position updated accordingly so that means now we need to define our new method of course this is exported to Godot so we need to have this prop or attribute on top again we define an unsafe method which is the underscore process ah sorry input and now we pass the arguments and in addition the input also is expecting an event which is actually an optional so therefore we are referring again to our Godot engine rust binding docs and are searching for the inputs so to make sure that we match the parameters okay this is like an optional or an option in that case of input event so we add this one as well And now let's implement the method body so therefore we will actually use almost the identical code we just integrated into the process method so again we have the input reference and based on the input reference we will update the, bool the boolean flag from our struct so for example if the input review is key pressed is key underscore a then we will say that the left property of the controlled struct will get true just to ensure that this really exists because sometimes the auto completion is not 100% working properly most of the time it does So and now let's update left to true. And in our process method, we will now update the position depending on the particular state of up, down, left, or right.
So let's now try out and build the modules. As you can see, Rust gives us very good hints from the compiler perspective. So I made actually a syntactical mistake, corrected it, and now the library compiles fine with few warnings, but this is fine so far. So next we add a new image to our scene. So it's this one, we call it controlled. And in the next step, we need to add this particular script. So therefore we create a new script, change it to native script to ensure that it's a native script. Then we pass the class name, which needs exactly to meet our new Rust module, so controlled. Then we are adding a new native library and select our operating system we want to support with that particular library. I use Mac, so therefore 64-bit. And then in our target folder under debug, you should see a new lib control dot something, which is the library we just created. And now when I press A, you see the sprite is moving to the left. However, we did not update or integrate uh, movements for left, up and down. So let's add this one now. So therefore we will just add other if conditions with the proper key and then set the property left up, down or right, depending on the key, of course, or on the key value. Once we are done, we need to, to build the library again. And as a result, we should be able to update the position now accordingly based on our keyboard input. However, we are currently not implementing when we suddenly let the key off. So that means our values are always true once we press a particular button and this is out of, of the ratio of this tutorial. However, as you can see now, various keys are working. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a comment. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Thank you.